Bulaginaka, my name is Lucia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news, restored rail system to be funded by government. Ignorance, no excuse in traffic. And more commitments to ocean protection. Level uh, round table on what the common law was. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. But first up, the government has intervened to address the current cement shortage issue. Minister for Economy Aya Said Kayum met with the Pacific Cement, Tenji Cement Company and other stakeholders this afternoon. Said Kayum says Pacific Cement will sell its clinker, a raw material used for production of cement, to Tenji Cement. It's also been decided that anyone willing to import cement will pay no duty. Pacific Cement has 24,000 tons of clinker, which it can't use because the factory is not producing. Uh, so there was some um, uh, overtures about the fact that perhaps uh, uh, Pacific Cement can sell its clinker to Tenji. Uh, we've now uh, reached an agreement. So Pacific Cement has actually agreed to sell the clinker um, to Tenji at $147 per ton. The government will provide $50 million to upgrade and restore the sugarcane rail system. This is part of the $202 million government guaranteed loan to the Fiji Sugar Corporation in the last parliament sitting. Farmers have often complained about the high cost of transporting cane and want the rail system to be reintroduced. Hundreds of farmers converged at Nukulua College in Bar last night to highlight issues affecting them during a consultation with the FSC and the Acting Prime Minister, Ayer Syed Kayum. Let's also try not to take advantage of the other. So if there's a shortage of trucks, I mean, uh, you know, some obviously the lorry drivers then can say, I want more money. And they know you'll pay because you have to take your cane to the, to the mill. Syed Kayum urged the farmers to take a holistic approach to their problems. Get more of your cane by rail, that means your cost of your cartridge will come down. So these are some of the fundamental issues that we need to deal with. Some of the farmers present at the consultations were asked to produce facts on the issues raised by them. I believe the FSC can be very transparent to the grower body through whatever forum we want to show you where the sugar is being sold, how much it's being sold for, what our competition we're getting to prove that we're getting you the best deal that we can. Clark says with the new board and management, their job is to commercialize FSC again. FSC will have a briefing on the corporation's strategic plan 2018-2022 on June 12. Rapata Valume, FBC News. Ignorance of the law and no-care attitude of drivers and pedestrians remains an enormous challenge for the Fiji Police Force and the Land Transport Authority. Statistics indicate speeding, driver fatigue and pedestrians failing to adhere to basic road rules are the main causes of fatal road accidents. Pranita Prakash has more. The Land Transport Authority Chief Executive and Police Director Traffic have placed emphasis on the need for drivers and road users to change their behaviour. And one way of doing that is with penalties. Um, not saying or suggesting there is a review or the government's deciding to change those penalties at this point in time. Um, but as a major deterrent to private behaviour and improving the safety of road users, one way is to address penalties. The Director of Traffic says they are having consistent meetings with stakeholders to address critical road safety issues. We need to change the mindset of our people to bring safety first before they commit offence. Before they do something wrong on our road, they need to respect the rule of law, they need to respect other road users. SSP Mishra says they have strategies in place to tackle the issue. We have beef of the operations as far as visibility is concerned. We have put uh, 16 vehicles on our main highways to ensure that we create uh, massive awareness and uh, enforcement activities on our public road. Within the first six months of this year, 25 people lost their lives on our roads. Out of these, there were six drivers, nine passengers and eight were pedestrians.
Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Republic of Fiji military forces has revealed that staff will soon be appointed to oversee the project budgets for the RFMF. While giving submissions to the Public Accounts Committee this morning, the RFMF Deputy Commander Brigadier General Mohammed Aziz clarified some overspending in projects undertaken by the force engineers. Shireen Shivan reports. One such project which resulted in overspending was the construction of a hospital in Rotuma this year because mobilizing the troops and equipment to and from Rotuma was an expensive exercise. It's a very daunting task to get materials and equipments uh, to Rotuma uh, with the limited uh, service that is available. The decision was made that if we had brought those equipments back and retaken them, uh, it would have cost us more than uh, what we had spent. So in good management practice, uh, the personals there decided uh, to continue with the phase and complete the work uh, that was required. Brigadier General Aziz says the role of the new staff will be to address the budget spending. Purchase order not issued prior to service delivery. Uh, in addition to the management comment, it should be noted that some of these transactions were made during the closing of account period, whereby the issuing of uh, POs were closed. The RFMF Deputy Commander has confirmed that the Ministry of Health has reimbursed the overspent amount last week. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. Partnerships and collaborations will be the glue that keeps the commitments of the UN Oceans Conference together. Prime Minister and Conference Co-President Vurenge Mbani Marama has racked up a number of high-level meetings with regional blocs all with the same message that united we can save our seas. Maggie Boyle with the story. Together we can roll back the tide on our damaged seas. The PM speaking to leaders of the African, Caribbean and Pacific states. Embracing the blue economy uh, represents the opportunity to realize the great economical uh, potential, economic potential of the oceans as well as ensuring their long-term sustainability. He then spoke to the Commonwealth, reiterating the need for the community of nations to bind together. This unique organization that binds us all together and on fairness, equity and the empowerment of women. Because we all know that uh, when women are empowered, they become powerful agents for change. Supporting his rhetoric was National Disaster Management Minister Inye Serratu. Ever Fiji is committed to help its own communities to improve the sustainability of their coastal fisheries. We have always worked closely with rural communities and traditional systems as we set national management policies and programs. The PM emphasizing that the time to act is now and that no delays could be afforded given the crisis of our seas. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Fiji has made 17 voluntary commitments at the UN Oceans Conference. They include the development of national policies on fisheries and coastal management and to significantly reduce the use of plastic bags. Maggie Boyle again with the story. With more than a thousand voluntary pledges already registered, Fiji stepped up to the mark with 17 additions. Our first voluntary commitment by the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Trade is a commitment to developing a sustainable tourism development framework by 2021, of which a large emphasis will be placed on the management and sustainable development of coastal and marine tourism products. Prime Minister and Conference Co-President Varangay Bani Marama highlighted the importance of legislation that will strengthen the commitments. The final stages of reviewing and formalizing the national fisheries policy, which would encompass the development and management of uh, coastal fisheries, offshore fisheries and uh, aquaculture, all of which would have uh, separate frameworks for implementation. Eradicating plastic use by 2020 also made the list as a dual point. This initiative commits Fiji to make deep reductions to the use of single-use plastic bags and plastic container use. The Fisheries Minister explained that Fiji's 17 goals were considered after a rigorous consultative process that will require all hands on deck for its successful implementation. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. 
Still to come, Fiji World Oceans Day celebrated. And Miss FBC News selected for Hibiscus Festival. Details after the break. The Supreme Court of Fiji has ruled that taxi owners can make their own arrangement with any driver holding a PSV license without employing them. The Supreme Court overturned a Fiji Court of Appeal ruling handed down in 2006 in the case of Hassan Ali and Transport Workers Union that raised a question about the character of the working arrangements between the owner of a fleet of taxis and his drivers. The appeal court has upheld, had upheld sorry, a high court ruling at the time, which had ruled that the relationship between the permit holder and the driver it employed was that of an employer and employee. However, now PSV permit holders can hire out but not sell their permits to other licensed PSV drivers who may not necessarily be employed by the taxi company. Fiji was the first country to mark the World Oceans Day today with paddling enthusiasts taking the sea for a sunrise paddle and cleanup campaign. Participant Duane Atong says the idea behind the Paddle to Save Our Oceans initiative is to educate and raise awareness on the effects of littering on our waterways. He adds it was also an opportunity to haul out all the plastic trash along the sea and truly make a dent on the day for cleaner, more sustainable seas. Close to 60 ocean athletes took part in this morning's sunrise paddle from the Utonialo, Fiji Outrigger and Fiji Yachting. He who plants a tree plants hope. Tourism Minister Fias Koya says we are the custodians of the resources for our future generations, hence we need to ensure that the resources are used in a sustainable manner. Launching the World Ocean Day this morning, Tourism Minister Fias Koya stressed on the importance of mangrove planting. Our actions, ladies and gentlemen, have affected the state of our oceans and we are at a time which is un un unprecedented and it's a challenge for all our communities in terms of the quality of life. Koya says climate change poses the biggest threat the world has ever known and our oceans and seas are deteriorating at an alarming rate. As the custodians of the resources for our future generations, we need to ensure that the resources are used in a sustainable manner. The ministry with other stakeholders and Shangri-La's Fiji resort staff collaboratively participated in a mangrove planting program. If we don't step in now uh, to, to do something about it, I think it can get only worse. If you look at our ocean now today, it's beautiful. This is part of the resort's corporate social responsibility. They will involve the public, communities and its visitors to plant more than 200 mangroves. Robert Valime, FBC News. 25-year-old Ro Anaseni Yambaki Vo will be representing FBC at this year's Vodafone Hibiscus Festival. Miss FBC News will be focusing on youth employment empowerment. Ro Anaseni Yambaki Vo says majority of our population are youth and the Hibiscus platform will help drive her message across. I am very passionate about youth and establishing self-efficient, self-reliant in terms of creating wealth and creating wealth for themselves that will you know, benefit them and their future generations. But I'm very excited to be sponsored by FBC News and FBC Corporation. Representing the country's biggest media house, FBC's Hibiscus Festival wasn't on the agenda as Yambakivo took a break from work to spend time with her grandparents. A former regional manager at one of New Zealand's major retail shop, Yambakivo has already begun campaigning. What they find it's to be difficult in getting jobs and you know, getting, um, uh, educating them in how to do a CV. You know, just simple things like that that can help them to start to create wealth for themselves. FBC Chief Executive Ria Said Kayum says this year's festival will be an interesting one as three media houses are participating, showing how important media is to the country. As long as you know, the competition is clean and uh, we... Uh, 
we uh, we have a lot of friendly rivalry going on because the media fraternity is is not a very big one in Fiji. Everyone knows each other and we want everyone to have fun and, <coughs> and have some really good competition. The week-long pageant will take place at the Vodafone Arena in Suva from August 11th to the 19th. The winning queen contestant will represent Suva at the Miss Fiji pageant. <laughs> Akusita Tali, FBC News. Ahead in sports with Jamie, FRU needs $2 million to host test matches, but joining us next is Akusita with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. Coming up in business tonight, Half pearl farming to begin in Gamea. And in growing Fiji, Harvest Supermarket plans to open more branches. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sorbokroa of Nayabu Wenimbuka Telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka. Love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. Leading our business tonight, a bilateral meeting between the Biosecurity Authority of Fiji and New Zealand's Ministry of Public Enterprises helped iron out a number of trade issues. Recently, the presence of pests in shipments to New Zealand caused them to ban the importation of eggplant that was lifted yesterday. Sharin Shivan reports. Both sides met yesterday for the first time in 15 years to discuss areas of mutual interest to enhance communication channels. Uh, we've agreed... Um, on the action plan, on the issues that were under discussion, and that uh, will serve as a basis uh, for us to co continue collaborating in the next year till we meet um, at the next uh, bilateral discussions. To move issues not into a, a issues resolution mode, but actually to look at positive developments for the future. New Zealand has been very critical of certain pests and diseases, in particular the giant African snails, which has impacted on our exports. So what this uh, seeks to do is that um, the containers already, they go through a certain process to make sure that all those uh, pests of concern um, that are very notorious are actually um, eliminated and it's certified. So when it reaches uh, the New Zealand border, then it gives them that assurance to say they don't have to actually turn that container or to do further inspections on that. The BEF chief executive says one of the local container handling company has been accredited to be able to export clean containers to New Zealand. The meeting has been hailed a success with both parties agreeing to meet once every year. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. Villagers from Kamea Taveuni hope to soon benefit from the establishment of a pearl farm in their waters. Viva Fiji Pearls Limited is partnering with the University of the Sunshine Coast in Australia to establish a half pearl, also called Mabe Farm, in Kamea. Half pearls have a flat side and are used for jewellery. The first half pearl harvest will be done next year with annual subsequent harvest. An initial production target has been fixed at 2,500 half pearls a year. Viva Fiji Pearls will provide the oysters used for half pearl production at Gamea, as well as some of the training and monitoring for this project. The Vanua Trust of Lothala will manage the farm through their women's group. The new farm will be the sixth half pearl farm established during the project and the first in Tavioni. The latest economic releases continue to show the volatility of the world's markets. Here's Elisa Pedi from the HFC Bank to tell us more. Good evening. An update on economic news released today. Australia expected a 1.9 billion trade balance for April, but figures showed it narrowed to 0.5 billion. That's a decrease of 82% from the 3.1 billion surplus recorded in March. Meanwhile, oil fell more than 4% after an increase in supplies. U.S. government data showed crude stockpiles rose last week, which sent oil prices lower. With the UK election looming, final polls suggest that Prime Minister Theresa May is on course to increase her majority. Opinion polls give May's Conservatives a lead ranging between 5 and 12 percentage points over her main opposition, the Labour Party. Thanks, Elisabeth. The Fijian dollar strengthened against the Chinese yuan and American dollar again today to close at 3.22 and 47 cents respectively. Looking at regional currencies, the Australian dollar rose slightly, closing at 62 cents. 
while the New Zealand dollar was down as well at 65 cents. And PNG Kina was also down, closing at 1.32. As for the commodities market, as oil prices fell to 45.87 a barrel, gold fell more than $7 to close at 1286.7 an ounce, and silver closed down $17.56 an ounce. In growing Fiji, the Global Harvest Holdings Limited, parent company of Harvest Supermarket, is planning to expand business to other parts of the country. The company owns the Kinoya Harvest Plaza in Asinu, where one of its supermarkets is currently located. Talks are already underway to spread the business to other places. I have four harvest supermarkets in Kinoy and Asinu, the most densely populated township in Fiji. Nosori, Turak and Suba, including the one here at Navu. The church says this is a great opportunity for them to provide services to all Fijians around the country. We are positioned to do that because CMF itself is in more than 100 countries. Burst in Fiji, from Lombasa, and now in, in more than 100 countries. The church has also confirmed that negotiations are already underway to confirm the next ID location for the new line of supermarkets. More than 80% of the businesses that are run there are run by women, and 90% of these businesses that run there are first time entrepreneurs. The four supermarkets have been able to create 80 jobs and invested in more than a million dollars. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. And that's business this evening. Now with the latest in sports, here's Jamie. Raka Kasita and good evening in sports tonight. Flying Fijians to take on Wallabies named... And Fiji football prepares for return encounter. This and more coming up. I am Pramila I am from I am I am I am is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बाहर टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट आई लव मिर्ची एफएम हमें स्पिन पकड़ पावो आके मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफ Senta Tsale Vatumbo will make his debut for the Vodafone Flying Fijians after being named in the starting lineup to take on Australia. Vatumbo will link up with Albert Vuli Vuli at centre, while Veronique Ngoneva and Timothy Nangusa will be out on the wings. Nicola Matualu and Ben Volavola make up the halves combination, while Kini Murimuriwalu completes the back line at fullback. Captain Akupu Singera leads from the back of the pack. Meanwhile, Kalivati Tawake and Vilame Mata may make their debut off the bench. Meanwhile, Flying Fijians coach John McKee believes that his side is able to counter Australia's playing style if it is anything similar to the Wallabies of late, which he anticipates. McKee has one more day to prepare his team to face the Wallabies in Melbourne on Saturday. Rohit Deo has more. The Vodafone Flying Fijians will be out to register its first win against Australia since 1954. McKee says it is possible knowing that Australia will be playing a similar pattern of game. Some, some new players in their, in their squad, I, I, I don't think they'll change their game plan much from, from probably what we saw at the back end of last year around the November tour. So, I, you know, we, we, we believe that, that we've got some um, good strategies around our, our team defence to be able to, to, be able to count, counter their game. And Australia escaped with a 28-13 win the last time we met in 2015 and the Fiji players are taking it positively for this week's game. I think we showed, you know, last time we played them in, in the World Cup, that that certainly we, we we can we can take them on. We can take them on in the set plays, and we can take them on in, in the in the open field play. So so that's that's the challenge in front of us is is to get all, all our players on the same page, get them all onto our game plan, and, and get our team cohesion. Captain Nakapu Singera says the young players in the team have worked hard to earn a sport. They're really excited about this challenge, and. Uh, 
I know that uh, they're not here by, by mistake. They've proven their worth in the, the different clubs they're playing in. And it's a good opportunity for them to put their hands up and uh, play for Fiji. The match kicks off at 5 p.m. in Melbourne on Saturday. The Flying Fijians will face Scotland and Italy after this. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. It will cost the Fiji Rugby Union $2 million to host Italy and Scotland this month. And to help out, the Fiji Sports Commission presented the FRU with $580,000 today to assist its preparations for the upcoming test matches. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor says 50% of the money needed has been given by World Rugby, while the remainder is being gathered from various stakeholders. Like in hosting the, the two test matches, uh, it's quite costly. And uh, most of the costs have to be met by the host union and their demands for the other unions. Eh? Um, I thank government for their assistance and support, eh? because if not, uh, we won't be able to attract teams to come here to uh, play the games here. Suva Grammar School received some welcome support today through apparel sponsorship as its 16-year quest for Dean's title continues. Jaxa Fiji has supplied the school's rugby teams with its Nganga brand of merchandise and jerseys for the tournament. Grammar's 2001 winning squad member and current Naita Siri rugby coach Koli Sewambu was at the presentation today and had a message for the players at his former school. When you wear the, the Ganga jersey, it just, it's not just a jersey itself, it's just not something on the outside that you show to people, it's something that is instilled within you. So to be successful uh, in life, uh, there's a number of things you need to, um, to understand. And I've always told my team uh, that there is no shortcut to success. Meanwhile, three secondary schools, they received their player development release fees from the Fiji Rugby Union. These schools are Natambua High, Suva Grama and Lelin Memorial. Four students from these schools are currently playing rugby in France. The release fees were paid by the French clubs for the release of contracted players from their schools in Fiji. This is uh, somehow a historical uh, uh, achievement, I may say, to the teachers. Uh, for sacrificing and uh, assisting uh, to rural developments in uh, secondary schools. Uh, in the past, we normally looking forward to this kind of uh, opportunity to get something from uh, the main body uh, regarding contracts. The Vodafone Fiji football side believes its game against New Caledonia in the return leg of the FIFA World Cup qualifiers will be even tougher than the first. The Christophe Gamel coach side had to come from being down 2-0 to salvage a 2 all draw in the first leg in Latoka yesterday, but Gamel was able to pull some important positives from the match. Rohit Deo has more. Pierre. Pierre comes in with a chip kick. Two quick goals from Nicola Donia in the first half left the local boys in a shock, but the side regrouped in the second half and pulled off a draw to the delight of the home fans. Second half gave me a lot of... Uh, Good expectation and uh, also uh, hope, hope for the future because you see that uh, mentally, these boys when they want, uh, no matter the, who is in front, they can continue to perform and I am there for that. Star striker Roy Krishna was sent in the second spell as Gamel says he needs time to get back in form after a break. Him before uh, that he will enter, but I wanted only 30 minutes, but. After this uh, injury of Seta, I have not changed to that make him coming uh, soon. Uh, I know that, that he had uh, 30 minutes in the legs. Now he... Oh. Krishna also felt that Gamel made the right decision and he delivered when it mattered. Like I said, I've been fatigued, you know, I've been not training uh, like I used to. But, you know, I think the performance-wise, I think the boys did really well. And uh, to come back from 2-0 down, I think it's something positive to take from this game. The two teams meet again on Sunday in Nicoladonia. The Fijian side leave our shows tomorrow. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Pakistan upset South Africa at the ICC Champions Trophy earlier today. The match had to be stopped due to rain and under the DLS method, Pakistan had a better run rate. That's it from sports this evening. Catch weather later on with Angie and in new media. Apple has unveiled its iPad Pro. Take a look at its improved features after the break. Bola, 
Nagura Rama in our money, Nandora. We do tell it again and the business of the level, Nagudo Rongo, Barong and Radio Fijuan, Nandumivit. Radio Fijuan, Nandumivit in Wonga and Vienna. In your media, following months of rumors, Apple has officially unveiled the 10.5-inch iPad Pro. It's a bigger, better screen with a much better camera and comes with lots of storage. It joins us now with the very latest in weather. Hello there and welcome to Weather World. There was a vast improvement in today's conditions. We saw a bit of sunshine, which unfortunately didn't last for long, although it stayed mostly throughout. Looking at today in the west, it was partly sunny for a while, but clouds fully covered the clear skies. Eastwards from Pak to Suva, we saw a bit of fair blue skies, but rain clouds also covered it up, and there's also chances of a shower or two. And up in Banwalevu, more band of showers will arrive by later tonight. At sea, east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. And for the tides, low tide tomorrow morning will be at 12.07 with a high tide at 6.15. Sunrise will be at 6.33. For tomorrow, it's the most awaited day because it's almost the weekend. But I'm afraid it's not looking well. There's bands of showers indicated, which means we might have to do our so-called plans indoor. Tomorrow's temps, most centres will be cool with highs of 28 and 29. Looking ahead to Saturday, go ahead, do your shopping, spend time with your family because we are looking at some fine weather. And that, Jackie, is FPC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji and Pulse today, we asked, should there be harsher penalties for people caught littering? Definitely, yes. And uh, yes, there should be hassle penalties for anyone caught littering. Yes, uh, people should take care of the environment and not to pollute it. Yes. I think uh, that's uh, giving a harsh penalty would be a great choice. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, we look at the business behind the Bulletproof Fabric. A leading textile manufacturer and fabric engineering company, Galvana Textiles, produces approximately 215 million square feet of high-performance materials in a year, including Bulletproof Fabric. Recapping the main stories, restored rail systems to be funded by government, ignorance, no excuse in traffic, and more commitments to ocean protection. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, has the campaign for next year's general election started too soon? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, today's shot of the day, another beautiful sunset from Number Walu in Vanuolevu, sent in by Kavinesh Kumar. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fb.com.fda or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Good night. My name is Sant Kumar, we are Radio Fiji 2 and in Tawa, we are the best Radio Fiji 2. We are Radio Fiji 2, we are the best favorite station. My name is Bruce Rao, we are the best market vendor and Radio Fiji 2, we are the best in 1954. We are the best Tawa, my name is Ramesh Chan, we are the best Radio Fiji 2 and we are the best Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2, the country's country.